you're gonna help me film the video. <laughs> My coffee has just spilled everywhere. Great. I have a feeling this is gonna be a long one today. So grab a drink, grab a snack and yeah we'll get into it hello everybody and welcome back to my channel i hope you're all doing really well if you're new to my channel then don't forget to subscribe and i really hope you enjoyed this video if you just came across this video because you were looking at drama school stuff then i do try and post quite a lot of drama school related content so subscribe if you would like to see some more of that this is a really requested video for me i get quite a lot of dms on instagram and comments on my videos um, from people asking like for drama school audition tips so I thought this would be a really helpful video because I know that I found these kind of videos really really helpful when I was auditioning and there wasn't actually that many of them out there but I do want to introduce myself a little bit for those of you who don't know me or if this is the first time you're watching my channel my name is Ruby I'm 21 and I'm originally from Birmingham I study dance and musical theatre at the Erdang Academy in London and I'm in my second year now. I took two years to get into drama school and I went to a foundation course which like prepared me for drama school auditions. So the way I wanted to do this video was give you guys audition tips relating to when I auditioned like if it was a in real life audition and then also wanted to do a sort of section on online auditions and because I haven't done an on online audition but I've done assessments online so yeah it can be so daunting I can imagine like doing self tapes for auditions but I just thought that would be a good thing to do at the moment because I know that all auditions at the moment are online so I thought I would add that in as well and then I've also asked on Instagram if anyone has any questions that they want me to answer at the end of this video which I wanted to share with you this little concoction I've got here I bought this cup from Etsy. I'll actually link down below the seller that I got it from because they do some really, really cute designs. Um, so it's like this normal Starbucks cup and then it's got Ruby on the back and I'm literally obsessed with it, it's so cute. But it's made me literally drink so much iced coffee. It's the cold brew es espresso thing, is it called? I don't even know what it's called, but it's like brown. And I put that in there. Then I put oat milk with this. And I don't know, but that combination is so nice. I don't need any sweetness or anything because I just feel like that's already quite sweet anyway. And then put ice in it, obviously. And I've literally been drinking these all the time. They're so good. Let's get into the video because I have literally rambled for so long. So the first tip I have is to really look into the schools that you're applying and find the best schools for you. Auditioning at drama schools is very, very personal. Like, I feel like everyone gets a different vibe from different places. Like, it really is up to you, like, how you feel when you go there. But I would really, really suggest doing taster days. I did quite a lot of taster days before I started auditioning. And I know that um, a lot of schools do online taster days. Well, I don't definitely do online taster days. I literally have said taste today so many times. What the hell is wrong with me? So yeah, go to open days, do that kind of thing. Um, obviously online at the moment, but just try and get to know the schools and get to know if you feel like you could see yourself there. I would say don't limit yourself. I'd say audition to all the schools that you really like. I actually wasn't going to apply to Erdang. That was literally the last place I, I applied to simply because I thought I won't get in there. I'm not a dancer. And I literally got in my head completely and I was like, I'm not going to do that. So I applied in the April and I got an audition in the May. I loved my Erdang audition day more than any of the other auditions I did and felt so comfortable, felt so confident. And it was my last audition, so I literally had nothing to lose. I was like, just go in and smash it. And then I got in and I just feel like that shows you everything you need to know. Don't limit yourself, just believe in yourself because you can do it. The second tip I have is be prepared. That is the biggest thing and the biggest thing I took out of auditions. In my first year, I was not prepared enough. My first year of auditioning, I was not prepared enough. I mean, gotta give myself a break because I was doing A-levels at the time as well and 
it was a really stressful time. But my second year of auditions, I was so much more prepared. The biggest tip I would give is to get a book and write down all of the requirements from all the different places you're applying. Because there are a lot of different requirements. Some places require you to have one monologue, some two. Some require you to have two contrasting songs, some one song, and like, then requirements within the songs that they have to be a certain time period, a certain style, yeah. There is a lot to prepare. So I would say write out each set of requirements for each school and then you've got them all written down. Also write down everything that you'll need on the day as well. So ballet shoes, for example, a leotard for dancing. Like literally write down everything you could possibly need and then again, check it off when it's packed. There is a lot, it is a stressful time, but if you love it enough, you will just enjoy it. Like my second round of auditions, I enjoyed so much more because I felt so prepared. I felt just excited to do them because this is the career that I want to go into. Like you just have to enjoy it. That is going into my next, my next tip. Also, that's just reminded me, I filmed a video about drama school I think it was this day exactly last year, which is really weird to me because I only noticed that literally this morning. So that's weird, but I'll link that video down below. There is a little bit of crossover. I'm trying to not make it too similar, but there definitely is a bit of crossover. Um, now I'm saying these things, I'm realizing I probably have said a lot of them <laughs> in my video this time last year. Was it actually on this day last year? That's actually creeping me out. But yeah, anyway, I'll link that video because there might be something, some things that I haven't said in this video that I did say in that video. Really importantly, you need to have researched the play that your monologues are from and read them and understand them and just really connect with them. And then also your songs, you need to know those musicals off by heart. Not because they might ask you, I mean they might, but it just is so helpful to you performing songs and monologues if you know the material. If it was in real life, so for the people I guess hopefully auditioning next year, and it will hopefully be in real life, make sure you've gone to a lot of open classes. If you're not as confident in, in dance, make sure your pickup speed is really strong because that will help you a lot in your auditions. It is so helpful to have that ability so that when you get into the dance part of the audition, if your drama school requires a dance part of the audition, you can pick up those dances really well and then you can think about the performance aspect of it. So my next tip is to be confident. There's a difference between confident and arrogant. Like obviously it's not good to be arrogant and cocky, but just having that confidence, knowing that you're good enough and that you deserve to be at this school and you deserve to be in that audition, that is really, really important. Easier said than done because nerves, even now, I like something I really, really do struggle with at times, but just try and enjoy it. At the end of the day, this is what you love. This is the reason you're auditioning because you love musical theatre. You just need to enjoy it, like just perform. It's much easier in real life, obviously, but when you are dancing in real life in an audition, you can just see it as an open class. Just try and, try and get out of the audition mentality. Again, way easier said than done, but the auditions that I enjoyed were the ones that I wasn't in my head telling myself, you need to do well, this is an audition, like putting loads of pressure on myself. So yeah, if you do get to do an in real life dance audition, just treat it like an open class and just enjoy it and smile. Smiling is so important. Another tip would be to make sure you look your best and feel comfortable. When you know you look good or know you feel your best and your most comfortable that is when you will perform your best in my opinion do your hair and makeup like like the way you like it obviously some places i audition they ask for you not to wear makeup or to wear very little makeup um so just make sure your hair is neat make sure you it's comfortable it's not going to fall out and same with your outfit just make sure you wear something that you like and something that sort of expresses a bit of your personality and the way you like to dress like don't try and be someone else just yeah be really presentable then that's again one less thing to worry about like if you've done your hair badly and then you're worrying about that during the dance audition and stuff that is just another layer of stress that you just don't need make sure you feel comfortable and happy in your appearance that is what i would say another tip is to be friendly to everyone just i mean that's just like a nice thing to do anyway like that's what you should be like in every day but yeah just really make sure you're friendly and you're like 
putting yourself across well. In singing auditions, you will be required to give your music to a pianist and if there is like a cut in it or the tempo changes or if there's something that you feel you need to talk to the pianist about, then just make sure you do it in a friendly way. Don't be rude. Um, yeah, just, just be a good, a nice person. On that note, don't get too wrapped up in what everyone else is doing because it can be easy to do that. Go into your sort of own little space. Um, make sure you just feel calm. Don't like wind yourself up. Just, yeah, just be chilled and confident and, um, and friendly, basically. Okay, so now I'm gonna move on to the sort of self-tape stuff because I know that obviously all auditions going on at the moment are online. So that is a very different experience to the way I auditioned. From doing self-tape assessments, I know that it is very, very easy to be hard on yourself and to be critical and to keep watching it back, deleting it, doing it again. So I think it's really, really important to obviously do your best, make sure you are prepared and everything. So for the dance, make sure you know the dance so well. I, I don't actually know how, this, how it works, but I think the um, school send you a video of a dance and you have to learn it and perform it on a self tape. I think that's how it works. So obviously just make sure you know that so, so well before you start filming. And then when you have filmed it enough times, like don't keep going over it, just, just send it in because you can't, you just can't be too hard on yourself. Just obviously do your best, learn it really well and then give it your all, perform it and enjoy it. The same for the singing and acting parts of the audition. Don't keep filming it because you will work yourself up. Again, learn it really well and then just perform it. Also from doing my self tapes for my assessments, make sure you get a good space and a good room to do each of those things. For singing, a room that will make your voice sound the best. Like obviously we don't have that many options being in the house, but just try and choose the best. Like I know some of my friends did it in their bathroom because that was quite echoey um, and sounded quite nice. I, don't, I didn't do mine in my bathroom. I don't know why. Where did I do mine? my kitchen. I think I preferred how it sounded in my kitchen. Again, not easy, but for the dance part of the audition, try and get a space that is big enough. Don't want to injure yourself or anything. And you don't want to feel like limited, like in any of the dances, like they won't make them ridiculously leggy or anything like that you physically couldn't do um, in, a, in a room, in a house. But just try to find the best space possible for whatever you are required to do. That's what I would say because you just wanna give yourself the best possible outcome in this situation. Finally, to finish this all off, before I go into the Q&A section, be yourself. I literally can't express how important that is. No school is looking for like a carbon copy of, of anyone. Like they want individuals, they want you to just be yourself, be confident, and just show what you've got. You need to go in knowing that you are going to improve, like you don't need to be perfect on the audition day. Obviously, it would be great if you smashed everything, or in your videos you did everything perfectly, um, but that's not necessary to get into drama school. Like I said, I wasn't the best dancer, and I go to now one of the drama schools, which I guess is classed as a dancey school um, because they're looking for individuals and people who have different strengths and yeah just be yourself show them what you've got and you will go to the school that is right for you I'm 100% sure on that I knew which schools I liked on the audition days but I know for a fact that I'm in the right place for me I literally love Erdang and could not be happier with where I ended up so just know that if you are yourself and you just are confident and trust that you are good enough, you will get in and you will go to the right school for you. Now I have a few questions. So the first question is, do you enjoy going to Erdang or do you ever wish you had gone to a different school? Literally what I just said, there were multiple schools that I liked, but I am so happy with where I ended up and it just does feel like the right school for me. Like on the day I felt that, and when I got in, I just knew like this was meant to be for me. So no, I do not wish I had gone to a different school. What is it like seeing so many Erlang students going on to do amazing things? I love that. That fills me with um, confidence and 
it just makes me think I am in the right place and the training is incredible. It's just, it's really nice to see people going on and doing amazing things and it makes me excited for my future, to be honest. That is how it makes me feel, so yeah. Where did you audition for when you were auditioning? I don't think I've ever answered this in a video, but let me go back, let me go back a few years. So on my first round of auditioning, I auditioned to Italia Conti, Trinity Laban for the musical theatre course, GSA. Is that all the places I auditioned to? I auditioned to unis, but um, I I didn't want to go to the uni, so I really don't know why I auditioned there. They were like unis that did musical theatre courses. And then in my second year, after doing my foundation course at SOAT, I auditioned to... Thanks. <laughs> so I auditioned to the Brighton Academy. They actually came into my foundation course and auditioned us um, like in-house. I auditioned to Trinity Laban again. I auditioned at Arts Ed, Mount View, GSA, Bird, Central, and then Erdang. I really actually enjoyed my auditions in the second year a lot more. Felt, like I said, felt so much more prepared. Was Erdang your top choice? I wouldn't necessarily say I had a top choice. I really, really liked Arts Ed when I auditioned there. Um, I got recalled and I was on the reserve list for literally ages. So I guess I would say that potentially would be my top choice. But then when I went to Erdang, I literally enjoyed the audition day more than any of the other schools. And I just knew that that was right for me. So I guess Erdang and Arts Ed were like my top choices. How was your audition process? So the first year round, stressful, not prepared, everything you wouldn't want auditions to be like. Second year, much better. I felt much more prepared, I felt much more confident and I really enjoyed it. Um, How many classes do you have a day? So it really varies at the moment, but I'll show you my timetable. I've got it all here. I'm actually on half term this week, so I don't have any classes this week. So on a Monday I have acting and then accent and dialect. I don't know if you can even see that. Tuesday is my massive day. I've got singing tech, voice, empty jazz, tech jazz, commercial. So that's five, so like two, five. And then three on Wednesday, four on Thursday, and three on Friday. So to be honest, it is quite packed. Like looking at it now, the only day where I don't have that many lessons is a Monday, which I'm not gonna lie, is so nice because it literally feels like an extension of the weekend. I'm also quite lucky because I don't have that many early starts. I have an 8.30 start on Tuesday. But apart from that, I really don't start that early at all. So that is nice. I think my first year I had like mostly 8.30 starts, which was like hectic, dramatic as hell. But yeah, so it sort of does vary depending on the day, but that is my timetable at the moment. Someone said, hi, I love your channel. I just got into Erdang for September 21. Oh, well done, congratulations. That's so exciting. Um, love to know what living in London is like. So I absolutely love living in London. Like when we could go out and do stuff, it was so, so fun. And where Erdang is, it is it's pretty central actually. Erdang is like Islington um, Angel area. So it is literally such a sick place to live and to go to uni was definitely more fun when we could go out though. And when my boyfriend comes to visit, like when we were allowed to go out and stuff, we would literally go to so many different restaurants and some people really don't like London. I mean, I, I come from a city anyway, so it doesn't feel like too different. Whereas I think if you came from like the countryside and you moved to London, you'd probably be a bit more like, but yeah, no, I love it. I love living in London. Advice for first year, I'm starting in September. Oh my gosh, that is so exciting. I literally would do anything to start first year again. Like, it's already going so fast. I'm already halfway through my training. Like that's terrifying, absolutely terrifying. Be yourself. When I first started, I did feel like some people weren't being themselves and, oh, it sounds a bit shady. It's not shady. Um, I feel like, it is really daunting going into a situ situation like this and like not knowing anyone. Like I personally didn't know that many people at all. But yeah, just be yourself and like you will attract people who are similar to you and you will end up with friends that are similar to you if you just are yourself. In terms of training, 
again, don't be too hard on yourself. Don't compare yourself to others as easy as it is being in a um, course like this when you're literally singing in front of each other, dancing in front of each other. It's really hard not to compare yourself and not to think like, oh, I wish I was as good as this person or I wish I could do that. Still need to tell myself this, but don't compare yourself. Just enjoy it. And just try and think about how, how lucky you are and how grateful you are because like a year ago, two years ago, you would have been thinking, oh my gosh, if I could have just, like, I just want to get into Erlang, I just want to get in, into drama school. And then like suddenly you're here. So just try and enjoy it as much as you can every single day. Do you have an agent? How does one acquire an agent and how necessary is an agent? So I don't have an agent currently doing a degree. I don't think you're allowed to take jobs while you're training on, de on a degree course. So I don't have an agent because I wouldn't be able to do any jobs anyway, but hopefully in third year I'll get an agent and I will book jobs then. How necessary is agent? I, I mean, I don't know a lot about it because obviously I've never had an agent, but just from what I know, it is like how you get auditions, it's how you get into the industry and get jobs. So I would say it's necessary in that way. So I'm literally just sat editing this video and I looked on my Q&A thing and I've got some more really good questions. I got another question that said, what made you choose musical theatre? And I thought that was a really good question. I have always loved singing like from a really, really young age and always been in like choirs and had singing lessons and so I've always loved it but I never really until the last like five years like considered taking it like into being a career and then I did some amateur dramatics and like um, put on shows with like a drama group I literally loved it like I was so passionate about it but I had like no idea how to get how you would get into doing that so I obviously did my research and found out about different drama schools and stuff um but yeah I just I think from joining that from being in school musicals and stuff I just knew that that was what I just loved doing I knew that it was more than just a hobby for me so that is why that's why I chose musical theatre and the other question I got that I really liked was how do you find the singing and dancing over online calls honestly that is what she's written and honestly i will be i will be completely honest it is it's really hard um dancing in your room on a zoom call is really difficult and sometimes really demotivating like it just feels a bit like like i'm not improving like i am in some areas but then it is it's just really hard but i just have to keep telling myself like this isn't permanent we will come out of this we will get back into the studio and fingers crossed my third year will be in real life and we will no longer be in lockdown situations so yeah just keeping my fingers crossed and hoping for the best outcome i think that is all I'm going to answer today. I really hope you found this video helpful. I, like I said at the start of the video, I found these videos so, so helpful when I was auditioning because I really didn't have that many people telling me what to do. If you are new to my channel, then please do subscribe. I would love to build this channel, keep, keep growing it. Thank you so, so, so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.